Hey there, Eli here, dragging bowcasters back into Path of Exile with the power of divine orbs in the form of Original Sin and Nimbus. You thought self-casting with a bow was gone? So did Chris Wilson. But what if we took it a step further and merged our self-cast bow build with a Herald Stacker? Today I present to you the absurdly expensive Ethereal Knives Poignite Ignoisen, you know, whatever. It's a 36 million hybrid ignite poison chaos conversion elementalist. I should edit that into something catchier. Well, let's look at the build in action so you can see if you like the looks of it. We'll get into the nitty gritty of how and why, but for now, what you're seeing on screen is everything within a two screen radius that's actually spawned into the map, dying from proliferating ignites and poisons slamming into them and chaining at about 200% projectile speed. Because we're converting our physical damage into two different elements before finally converting it into chaos, our Gloom Fang is giving us a ton of extra damage because of its chains. But what about when you're fighting some pinnacle boss like the Eater and you have nothing to chain off of? Fear not, for Hydrosphere is here! You remember back in 3.13 Ritual League when this skill was abused so hard by Hateforge Rage Builders who went infinite with Veil skills and was never seen again? I'm happy to say it still serves the three of us who want to use chain against single targets. And it serves us very well. When it comes to gameplay, mapping is pretty straightforward. We're activating our Malevolence Aura every 20 seconds or so and slamming Veil Haste whenever possible so we can zoom zoom on through the trash. Other than that, we're just tapping Ethereal Knives as we go. Now when you're thinking about using Nimbus in a build, you have to consider how you're going to deal with projectiles being shot in random directions. Ethereal Knives is great for this because it gains a ton of extra projectiles by itself, which gives us more general area cover. And when we add Chain into that with Gloom Fang, anytime one of those 14 projectiles hits anything, it'll chain to the nearest enemy, and then those two will proliferate our ignites to everything else. One of the benefits of Nimbus is a sort of conditional one, where maybe we're shooting our projectiles out and a monster walks into the path, the projectile went by, and then the projectile comes back and hits that mob. Kind of a small-ish benefit, but a nice one. But the bigger benefit is that if you have enough projectiles, you can just spam your skill and keep walking. We have so many projectiles going out that the odds are actually in our favor that everything around us is just gonna die. And in the case of Ethereal Knives with 200% projectile speed, it's actually everything within a multi-screen radius. I, for one, am a big fan of not having to actually aim and hitting my target anyway. When it comes to bossing, we have a couple options. If we want to max DPS output, we want to hit them with Withering Step whenever it comes off cooldown, throw Temporal Chains on, and toss out a Hydrosphere. Each of these steps adds a ton of damage. Okay, you've probably seen enough gameplay to get an idea of how the build works. It's pretty straightforward. So let's go over the gear, passive tree, clusters, cause there's some stuff going on here. Going into this, I had a dream. Well, I had two dreams. The first was to make something that wasn't already being done using the original Sin. Talking about you, Tornado Shot and Strength Stackers. And my second dream was to use Nimbus. So just to be clear, if that doesn't make it obvious enough, this build is for fun, created mostly because it can be, not for really any other reason. So if you're thinking, Eli, you're out of your mind, no one's gonna make this build. I'm right there with you. No one should make this build. So sit back and enjoy the ride of how it works. Maybe it'll spark an idea or two for some other more reasonable character. The passive tree is as good a place as any to start. Elementalist is excellent for us because of two things, Shaper of Flames and Mastermind of Discord. And that's a sentence that hasn't been uttered in at least 10 leagues. The reason is because Shaper of Flames solves our ability to cause ignites with chaos damage, and Mastermind of Discord pumps up our fire exposure in a way that can't realistically be obtained otherwise. Even though we're using Original Sin, which sets enemy chaos resistance to zero, the damage caused by ignite is still fire. I'm sure some of you know this, but I'll say it again to be clear. Ignites caused by damage other than fire still deal fire damage. So where Shaper of Flames solves our ignite with chaos on hit problem, Mastermind of Discord gives us the ability to then drop boss fire resistance down towards zero. We're using a medium cluster jewel with heraldry to give us an AoE aura of fire exposure at 10%, which with Mastermind gives us negative 35% fire resistance for enemies near us. Then, on our boots, we have the Exarch implicit of dropping Scorched Ground lasting 5 seconds when a unique is nearby, bringing us to negative 45 fire resist, which gives pinnacle bosses a mere 5% fire resistance. That's good enough. Our other two elementalist passives are straightforward. Shaper of Storms for an automatic 27% shock, and Heart of Destruction for a nice damage boost against bosses and other uniques. Here's a panning look at the passive tree. Because we're stacking auras and heralds, we're gonna take some clusters you'd expect. 
namely sovereignty, the two herald clusters, and influence. But let's look at our cluster jewels because they're important, like really important. The large clusters serve their purpose of giving us additional resists to bring us over the cap along with a bit of damage. Nothing too special here. Now the two medium clusters on the left side here are the same in terms of their notables, Circling Oblivion and Septic Spells. We only need one Septic Spells notable to break the 100% chance to poison breakpoint, but it turns out it's a fine damage node as well compared to the others available, so I took two of them. And that caps our chance to poison on hit, which is critical. The two medium clusters on the right give us Heraldry, which was what allows us to get fire exposure, two Endbringer nodes, which are essentially 35% increased damage, and Purposeful Harbinger. Remember that guy? The one that completely broke the game three years ago and forced grinding gear to nerf it mid-league and then again afterwards? Truth is, even though only one can affect you now, it's still very, very strong. Since we're running three heralds, we're getting a nice 24% additional effect of our four auras off this one. Oh yeah, and this little small cluster is critical as well. It's what allows us to hit that 100% mana reservation by bringing down our hatred aura's reserve cost. Okay, that's our clusters done. Next up are Keystones and Timeless Jewel. We're using four Keystones. First is Elemental Overload, a clear pickup since there's no way we can fit Critical Strike into this build. The other three work together as a team. Eldritch Battery, Wicked Ward, and Mind Over Matter. Eldritch Battery lets us cast spells while we reserve 100% of our mana. Mind Over Matter gives us a nice layer of defense so that damage hits our energy shield, despite our energy shield being used as our mana pool. And Wicked Ward lets our new energy shield mana pool shield regenerate more often even while taking random hits of damage. And I do mean random hits of damage because generally speaking everything just dies. Monsters don't really have a lot of time to hit us. And now our Timeless Jewel. I'm going to use this to transition over into looking at our gear afterwards. The reason this jewel exists in this build is primarily to increase our projectile speed. There's a theory going around that there's a magic breakpoint at which all projectiles, even ones that dissipate or disappear after a certain distance, will return back even if they don't hit an obstacle. Thank you, Captain Lance. What that exact breakpoint is, I don't think anyone knows at this moment, but it seems to exist, so I went ahead and got a Timeless Jewel to not only give us additional projectile speed, but also synergize with other wants of the build, like minion damage and resistances. But using a Timeless Jewel like this gives us more flexibility on the resistances needed on our gear and gives us additional value for pathing into Spiritual Aid. Spiritual Aid? Yes. This is a Herald Stacking Aura Effect Hybrid Ignite Poison build with four keystones doing 36 million boss DPS that also uses additional minion damage. Let's take a look at the gear because this is where it gets fun. This is our caster bow. It's pretty straightforward. We grab a bow that has cast speed fractured and start slamming essences of fear. For this one, I use the tier two essence, which is selling right now for one chaos each. Anytime I can quote unquote slam craft an item for one chaos per slam, I'm into it. So we hit this until we get damage over time multiplier and an open suffix. If you filled up your suffix slots, just a null one off like a pro gamer and craft fire damage over time multiplier. All done. Quick note here for anyone paying attention. Yes, this base sucks. It's 170 decks. If you're insane enough to make this build, I'd get a lower dex rec bow, which would allow for some other min maxing to happen on our gear. The quiver is also crazy synergistic and a big reason why I wanted to bring back the bow caster. It helps solve our attribute needs, gives us a ton of extra elemental damage to convert, and a mass amount of projectile speed. Whatever that projectile speed breakpoint is, we'll want a quiver like this. I crafted the helm too, and again, crafted it, by buying the base with the lab enchant, throwing greater eater ickers on it until we get 8% mana reservation, which costs one chaos each, then putting a grand exarch icker on it so that we can get better odds on our orb of conflict to get that 8% up to 9%. From there, I'd prefer the cast speed when a unique enemy is around for another 4%, but I ran out of embers and I just don't feel like buying anymore. Once we take care of that, we just slam Screaming Essences of Loathing, which are, you guessed it, one chaos each, and wait for that energy shield number to be really high. All we really need is a suffix slot open so we can craft this ailment duration while focused mod, and we're done. If, like me, you roll a hat that has an open suffix and prefix, craft on the ailment duration and exalt slam it for a decent chance at hitting one of the three prefixes for increased energy shield. The gloves are another critical piece of this synergistic puzzle of gear and passives, as the Eldritch Implicits matter a whole lot. 
This is a conversion build and it turns out getting fizz to cold conversion without using uniques or having the skill gem do it for us is a little bit tricky. We can convert 100% fizz to cold if we want to use orbs of conflict, which is what I'd do if I was committed to fully min maxing. This version sits at 93% from our gloves, watcher's eye, and the glove craft there for 25%. This is important because we're converting fizz to cold to fire to take full advantage of multiplying elemental damage across multiple conversions before eventually turning it all into chaos. Finally, we use our gloves to proliferate ignites to solve our crowd clear problem. The gloves themselves are nothing to write home about. I think they were something like 20 chaos. The belt is boring, just an attribute and resistance fix. There's probably something smarter to do with this slot, but whatever. Now our boots are also pretty cool. And yes, I know the enchant makes little sense and there are better options, but I don't want to run Uber Lab or pay a runner. We get a nice damage boost from ignites dealing damage faster. And remember about the exposure hitting 45%? The boots are how we do that. Like with the gloves, the boots themselves stat wise are nothing crazy. These were maybe 30 chaos. For armor we went with skin of the lords with mind over matter on it to save us three skill points. The fact that gems have to be corrupted doesn't really matter much as they're going to be corrupted eventually anyway. And because we easily hit the damage over time cap for pinnacle bosses there's not a lot of pressure to min max our gems in this way. But if you wanted to a 2120 ek is like 60 chaos so there you go. Lastly, and importantly, our amulet is Gloomfang. For those unfamiliar, this is the purpose behind using Hydrosphere on bosses as we're gaining 32% of non-chaos damage as chaos. To be clear, that means 32% of our physical damage, then 32% of our cold, then 32% of our fire is all gained as extra chaos in addition to the damage we're getting from converting all of that into chaos. If we converted 100% fizz to cold, we're gaining 64%, but we only convert 50% of our cold to fire, so on that, so that brings us to a total of about 80% more damage from using Hydrosphere. It also gives us our leech and some more projectile speed. Not too bad for an amulet. And we're going to take the corruption notable as almost all chaos damage builds want to take that. As for what needs to be explained about the build, I think that about does it. The damage can absolutely be maxed out further, but it would only really matter for uber pinnacle bosses, which I wouldn't recommend doing as our defensive layers just don't stack up hard enough for that. All in all, I'm happy with the build and most importantly, it feels smooth and fun to play. And you guys saw it in the POB here, the effective hit pool is really nothing to write home about. It's going to be plenty for most of your mapping and most of your bossing, but it's really not a build that can stand up to uber pinnacle bosses or heavily juiced multi-alter delirium mapping. Anything that's like the feared or below, it's going to be fine mostly because it hits the damage over time cap. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my silly build that has 130 divines in just the rings. And as for me, this is Eli signing off.